October 3rd, 2008. On one side, you have Billy Proceda, the court-appointed receiver who was chosen by the creditors. On the other side, you have Doug Kelly, who is a lawyer hired by Petters. Kelly's refusal to comply with the Illinois court order and cooperate with Proceda as receiver seemed to allude that something was happening behind the scenes unbeknownst to the receiver or the creditors. On October 6, 2008, a private meeting was held where an emergency situation was presented to Federal District Court Judge Ann Montgomery, off the record. It was brought to her attention that substantial injury could occur if action was not immediately taken. According to the complaint, it appeared that Petters was still a threat. Ultimately, it was requested that a receiver be appointed at once to prevent immediate and irreparable harm. Signed on the stipulation filed with the court were names of the assistant U.S. attorney and Tom Petters' attorneys calling for a receivership. Neither PCI nor PGW were parties to the stipulation. The only person in a position to act on behalf of these entities was attorney Doug Kelly. Instead of signing with Hopeman and the U.S. Attorney's Office, Kelly was named to be the receiver. What was going on here? We may never know for certain as no witnesses were present and no affidavit was filed for this meeting between Judge Montgomery and Doug Kelly. Neither Billy Frasita nor the secured creditors of PGW were notified of this meeting. The bankruptcy court entered a protective order prohibiting PGW creditors from taking Kelly's deposition in order to determine what exactly he told Judge Montgomery on the October 6th meeting. The decision made based off this ex parte communication completely disregarded and ignored the facts that not only was a receiver already appointed, but there were also three temporary restraining orders in place protecting the assets of PCI and PGW. All of this was on top of the fact that Petters was already in jail. How could he still be a threat? To make it even clearer that there was no emergency and false claims had been made, Steve Wolter, Doug Kelly's partner, had been granted an irrevocable proxy over all of Petters' companies and was now standing in Petters' shoes. Clearly, there was no factual basis for ex parte relief in this situation. Due process was ignored and Kelly walked away with the receivership. But the decision to appoint him as receiver was made in secret with incomplete or misleading information supplied by Kelly to Judge Montgomery. There are some major problems with the situation we just observed. An ex parte communication is a private meeting or discussion with a judge where only one party is present and opposing viewpoints are not considered. Because of the potential for injustice, ex parte communications are limited to extraordinary situations. The U.S. Constitution provides that no person shall be deprived of any interest in liberty or property without due process of law. As the secured creditors of PGW's wishes were blatantly ignored, Billy Proceda was sent home and Petter's lawyer, Doug Kelly, assumed control as the newly appointed receiver. While this turn in events dumbfounded the creditors, it was only the beginning in a series of devastating transgressions to come. 